crafters, it's Cynthia. Today I wanted to share with you an item that I have in my craft room that I created for myself and I use this again and again and again. So what this is, I just had a one inch three ring binder that I salvaged from who knows where, <laughs> I don't know what used to be in it, but um, I wanted to create for myself a book of colors and the idea behind this was that I wanted to have immediate access to all of the colors that I have in my craft room which applies to ink pads and um, paints and cardstock and just things that you turn to over and over again when you're crafting and making cards and so I just thought, well, if I have a color glossary that I can refer to all the time, it's just going to make it so much easier for me. So I did my best um, at kind of organizing from lightest to darkest shades. Um, this one is a new color that I haven't yet um, incorporated into where it should fit. <laughs> but um, these little packages, or excuse me, pages, are really nice. And these actually are for coin collectors. So there's little two inch pockets, and you can see how many you get on a page. And uh, it's just a nice plastic page. And they're slit at the top so that you can just pull in and out uh, whatever you want to tuck inside there. So I liked the size of this because it was big enough to give me a real good look at the colors, but small enough where I could get a bunch on one page. So what I've done is I have um, either stamped or just rubbed the ink pad directly onto each one of these little pieces of cardstock. I wrote down the company of the ink and the color of the ink. So obviously distress, this stands for Stampin' Up, SSS stands for Simon Says Stamp, Memento Die, I know what, I have all the little uh, dewdrop pads, so, but I know they're Memento. Um, what other brands do I have? MFT, so my favorite things, and um, SU is Stampin' Up. So what I've done is went ahead and stamped or swiped all the ink pads and then if I have a coordinating card stock, I have them together. So Stampin' Up Strawberry Slush and the backside Stampin' Up Strawberry Slush. So I know I have the card stock and the ink. And then I get to see what they look like together. So again, with the My Favorite Things, otherwise known as MFT, I have the Wild Cherry Ink and I have the Wild Cherry card stock. So I can see at a glance. So if I know I want to make a red card and I want ink and matching card stock, I come here and I know I can do this one or this one or chili powder is another one that I have both the ink and the paper. And cranberry cocktail from my favorite things, which is a beautiful color. But in the case of Schoolhouse Red, I have the paper, but I do not have the stamp pad. So if I know I want to place an order, or let's say I'm getting a couple of uh, stamp sets from Simon Says Stamp, and if I just put one more item in my cart, I get free shipping, then I can look at this and go, hey, I'm going to grab that ink pad today, and there you go. Then on the back side, um, I also have the names visible, so just at a glance I can flip the page and see some of the colors. So like I didn't look at the Flirty Flamingo, but I did buy both the ink pad and the matching paper from Stampin' Up. And that's one of the new in colors, in case you're wondering. <laughs> and then this goes into the pinks. And uh, again, same idea. I have the company and the color. Um, if there's ever a, you know, match, I know it immediately. 
And then I did my oranges here. Again, with the cardstocks, you can see here's my yellows. And here are my greens. I kind of divided the greens. Um, oh, I was wondering what that was, but you can see through it. Okay, anyway, I divided the greens into two kind of different color groups. And here are my blues. And I have a lot of um, turquoise type blues because I'm just totally drawn to that. And then um, here I have again good examples of cardstock that I have but not the matching ink. And so I happen to know that MFT is the one that does this snow cone. So I didn't write MFT but I know it is them. Uh, this is Simon's Sea Glass cardstock which is fabulous but I don't have the ink. I have the Stampin' Up! Pool Party paper, but I do not have the pad. So, and then like here again, Boysenberry, which is one of the latest cardstock colors. Um, and it's absolutely fabulous, but I don't have the ink pad yet. And yet, um, you know, just by looking at this paper, I could find an ink that I do currently own um, to make as good of a match as I can. And then the other nice thing about these cards is that I can just slip this out and take this to my project. So let's say I'm looking through all of my pattern papers and I found something that's really wonderful and it has this great purple in it. Well, I can pull this out, hold this against that paper and see, is this a nice match? And it just makes it nice because then you're not looking at this whole sheet. You just pull the one color you want and do a comparison. So now I have neutral colors, browns, into the grays, and of course black. Then I made little sample swatches of my Memento Lux pigment ink pads. And I don't have many of these because I, I don't really do much with pigment inks. I'm never happy with pigment inks. And it's a shame, but I just don't seem to have much luck with those. So... You know, I never continued my collection. Then I have some of the Memento markers. And so whichever ones I had, I colored a little swatch and uh, wrote down the name of what it was. And then I have Avery L pigment inks. And these, oh my gosh, the colors that Avery L has are just to die for. But I'm telling you, I don't even think these are dry. And I, like this one feels, see? It feels a little sticky. And I mean, I've, I've had this in here for a couple years. I mean, definitely a year and a half, if not longer. So I don't understand why they'll never dry, but that's why I never bought any extra colors because I just, I get so frustrated. And I don't want, I know I can sprinkle them with embossing powder and seal them, if you will, but I don't want them to be glossy. So anyway, then my Distress inks, I do have them separated um, in their own little section because um, oftentimes I'm reaching for my Distress inks only because I, I want to play with them and I want to do something special with them since they're a unique ink that you can watercolor with and do all of these things with. Um, I just wanted a separate section of all the colors I currently own so that I can pick those out. Then I have some distressing paints. And so I just did a quick, and I, I just used my finger and just went like that and <laughs> made some real quick little smudges of the colors and again with their names. And then I have some alcohol inks. And so I have little swatches of all of those. And they're a lot of fun, but again, I'm kind of, not so great with using them. So I just, I don't really use them very much. And again, they have a huge palette of gorgeous colors, but um, this is all that I currently own. And then Colorbox Pigment Inks, again, I just bought a few of them, don't care for them that much, so. Then I have all my Prismacolor pencils. Now I have owned my Chris Prismacolor pencils since I was 15 years old is when I first started collecting them. So let's just say that it's been a few years. <laughs> so um, 
I love them and it's the only colored pencil I've used obviously most of my life. Um, so anyway, I went ahead and just kind of again separated them by colors and wrote down the name and the item number. And then if I ever, wow, can you hear the dogs? Oh dear. Anyway, those are the neighbor's dogs, not mine. Um, anyway, so if I need to order a new one or if I'm trying to find a specific color or I want to match colors or whatever, I've got all my references here. And these are some special metallic colors that I have and then simple black and white. And some more browns and grays. And then these, I didn't write the title up here yet, but these are all my Zig um, clean color real brush markers. And so what I did is I just uh, drew a little marker and then took a wet paintbrush and then just colored over and pulled the color out so that I could see um, the gradation and how they look when you add water to them. So now this is just my um, 48 set of colors. I have recently purchased uh, several more colors, but I haven't added them yet to this. And then these, I think this is, yep, this is the last of it. These are all of my Tombow Mono, or not Tombow Mono, excuse me, my Tombow Dual Brush Markers. And um, they do not have names, they just have numbers. So I went ahead and put them in order, um, kind of color order, and then I wrote down all the numbers. So I know what I have. And I keep all of those in their own little special case. But this is a good reference. And then the last thing in here, I have all of my card stocks. And um, so here's a repeat of, you know, the Schoolhouse Red and the Strawberry Slush and um, the two raspberries from MFT and so um, some of them are repeats you know because here I've got the strawberry slush and the schoolhouse red and things like that so I have you know but this I wanted these were to show me when I had ink and paper together these are just my cardstocks so regardless of whatever ink I'm using these are my cardstock colors and so Basil, which is one of my all-time favorite cardstocks, um, I have a bunch of Basil cardstock, and it's really thick. And uh, these are all from the card shop line, Basil card shop. And they're just beautiful. So I have purchased a whole bunch. And, you know, I have um, full 8.5 by 11 sheets. I have bits and pieces, whatever. But uh, I put all of those colors in here. So then you get the oranges, it moves into the greens, the blues, more blues, the purples, and the neutrals. And Simon Says Stamp Fog is such a beautiful soft gray. I just love that. But anyway, so that is all the cardstock. And then this, I believe, is my final thing. But uh, what I did here was Sherry Carroll from Simon Says Stamp. I'm not sure now where she had this, if it was like on her blog or something. But anyway, she had this fabulous list of color combinations in the Distress Ink. And um, so I had most of the colors. So I went ahead and I took my favorite flower stamp and I stamp, 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 stamp each one of her four color combinations. And I do have Carved Pumpkin now, but I haven't added it yet, so I'll have to stamp that in. But um, I don't always have the best luck <laughs> picking colors to go together. And um, when I'm playing with Distress Inks in particular, I, you know, I try to grab different things to make something pretty, and oftentimes it just doesn't work out. So the reason I wanted to copy all these down was so that when I want to play, but I can't think of colors, I've got this to refer to. And I love Sherry Carroll's style, 
and her aesthetic and her design sense and her color choices. So I admire her skills in particular. So that's why I wanted to write these down. So, and again, I don't have shabby shutters. I don't have spun sugar. Um, I don't think I have brushed corduroy or old paper. Um, but, you know, as I get those colors, I can add them into the combination. And then even if I don't get this color, um, maybe I can find a different soft pink or, you know, whatever. But anyway, so that is my color book. And like I said, I personally love to do stuff like this. Some people absolutely can't stand um, to, you know, they feel like what a colossal waste of time to sit around stamping continuously and cutting little squares of paper and, you know, but I love that kind of stuff. So this was a labor of love. And let me tell you what, having it is wonderful. So even though I've got a whole bunch, obviously a whole bunch of stuff in my craft room, um, this really helps me stay focused and pick what I need and get a project done in a reasonable amount of time. So anyway, I recommend that you come up with a system of your own, whatever works for you, but it really in the long run is a nice tool to have. So thank you so much and I hope that you're having fun wherever you are and having a chance to craft as often as you want. And uh, please be sure to come back to my channel for my next video, which will be coming out soon. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.